They're creepy, they're crawly, and they're often first on the scene where a dead body is concerned. They only have one goal, to gorge themselves on rotting flesh. But do maggots deserve their reputation as gross-out fuel? This is Science of the Scare. Every month we will dissect a horror topic through a science lens and talk through it in mostly easy to digest terms. This episode, we're taking a look at the maggot. Is it a nasty, lowly flesh eater or an unsung decomposition powerhouse? Those flies that you see buzzing around garbage cans, they were once maggots. That's all maggots are, fly larvae. The larval stage in a fly's life cycle is what comes after the egg, but before the pupa that will become an adult fly. It's basically the equivalent stage to a caterpillar that needs to feast on leaves to become a butterfly. When you're staring at a maggot, it's pretty much impossible to tell exactly what kind of fly maggot it is. Even scientists often have to rear mystery maggots into their adult fly forms to confirm their identities. I say true maggots because horror movies often like to sub in mealworms for maggots, probably because they're easy to buy at pet stores. While they are technically larvae, mealworms grow up to become darkling beetles, which would much rather munch on plants than a festering wound. Mealworms are easy to spot on screen. Just check out this shot from Phenomena that features maggots and mealworms side by side. You can easily spot the mealworms because they have legs, not to mention a crunchy, segmented body that gives them their stripy good looks. If the sight of a mass of maggots makes your stomach turn, you're not alone. Disgust is a powerful tool that your brain uses to keep you away from something that has the potential to make you sick. Not all fly larvae stick to rotting meat, but the maggots that we see on screen usually represent the Phoenicia or Lucilia sericata species, also known as the green bottle flies or blowflies, hatched from eggs laid in dead or rotting flesh. Where there's dead meat, there's more than just maggots. Rotting flesh is rife with other microbial action, including pathogens that can make humans super sick. We can't necessarily see these microbes with the naked eye, but maggots can act as squirming red flags that something is not safe to handle or eat. But are maggots actually dangerous? Well, yes and no. Maggots have been approved by the FDA in the United States as a medical device since 2003, but they have a much longer history in medicine. For centuries, military surgeons have described that maggot-infested wounds on soldiers tended to heal better than the ones that hadn't been infested by little fly babies. They also noticed that these wounds were relatively free of infection once the munching larvae were cleaned out. Popularity as a treatment took a dip in the mid-20th century with the rise of antibiotics. But by the late 1980s, maggots started to make their comeback when it became clear that antibiotics can't cure all wounds, especially as microbes begin to develop resistances. The reasons why maggots work so well for wound cleaning are twofold. The first reason is that they are extremely efficient at clearing out the dead tissue and leaving live stuff alone. This process is called debridement. Instead of teeth and jaws, maggots have little hooked mouth parts and they need to dissolve their food to scoop it up into their mouths. This is something that director David Cronenberg made sure to depict in his 1986 transformation horror, The Fly. Dead cells break down readily for slurping, while healthy living cells with functioning cell membranes have some built-in resistance to the enzymes, leaving them undissolved and uneaten. The second reason maggots work so well is because their spit and other secretions have been shown to have powerful antibiotic properties. One of these secretions is ceratocin, which has been effective in treating even antibiotic-resistant microbes like MRSA and C. difficile, the sorts of pathogens that can wreak havoc in hospitals and cause limb-threatening infections. While maggots are clearly amazing, I don't recommend that you let a housefly lay eggs in your next paper cut. Medicinal maggots are regulated and raised in a clean environment, where they're unlikely to pick up and transmit other infections into your body. Not all wild maggots are created equal, and while they might save your life in a pinch out on a battlefield, there's always a possibility that they will either infect your living flesh or transmit a disease to you. Another way to get sick from maggots is by eating them, and some of the most iconic maggot scares from the chicken drumstick in Poltergeist, the canned beans in Ghost Ship, and the rice in The Lost Boys come from surprise food maggots. While the maggot stand-in, the mealworm, can be dry roasted and seasoned into a crunchy snack, eating maggots is a bit more of a no-go. Don't forget that unlike the mealworm, which primarily eats plants, maggots are born and raised eating rotting meat and poop. Chowing down on maggots is a recipe for bacterial poisoning. 
It's no wonder seeing maggots on food in the movies makes us want to barf, probably even more so than when we see them on a corpse. There is at least one exception to the maggots as food rule though, even if it is a controversial one, and that is kazumartsu, also known as the Sardinian maggot cheese. If you haven't heard of it before, this cheese is cultural to the Italian island Sardinia and involves inviting cheese flies, the Pyophila casei, to lay eggs in a wheel of sheep's milk cheese, and then letting that cheese sit untouched for a couple of months in a dark spot. During that time, thousands of maggots eat the rotting cheese and poop out the creamy kazumartsu. Apparently it's delicious, uh, I wouldn't know. For one, it's illegal in most parts of the world for the health risks associated with consuming it. For another, you're only supposed to consume kazumartsu while the maggots are still alive and squirming inside it. If they're dead, then the cheese is especially unsafe to eat. For most people, that particular yuck factor might be insurmountable. All things said and done, Sardinia is known for having one of the highest life expectancies in the world and is home to a high concentration of people living well into their hundreds. So maybe they know something that we don't. Next time maggots have got you feeling a little nauseated, you can thank your brain for trying to keep it safe and then tell it to chill out because maggots are pretty cool actually. And also because you're probably not planning to eat them. Do you have a newfound appreciation of maggots? Let us know your thoughts on Dread Central's Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter at Semabiologie.